In the next two videos, we're going to take a look at the finder. In part one, we'll discuss the general layout and its different sections. In part two, we'll explore how to search for files and folders within the finder, as well as the view toolbar for viewing these same files in different ways. So let's get started. As mentioned in our previous videos, two of the most important sections of the desktop are the dock at the bottom of your screen and the menu bar at the very top. The finder is the blue smiley faced icon at the very left end of the dock, and along with the dock and the menu bar, round out three of the most helpful areas of your Mac. The finder is the first application to launch when you start a Mac, and its name appears in the menu bar if no other application is being used. It's a bit similar to My Computer and Windows in that it stores all your stuff, your documents, photos, anything you create or save on your computer should be stored in the finder. Many people switching from a Windows PC are used to storing all of their files right on the desktop. Although this method starts out with the very best of intentions, it quickly leads to a cluttered desktop that makes it very hard to find what you're looking for. We're going to show you how your Mac is set up to store applications you use most often in the dock, and everything else is tucked away in the finder. It's a shift of perspective, but it'll go a long way to keeping everything on your Mac in good order. To launch any application from the dock, you just click once on its icon. Since the finder is always running, clicking on its icon opens a new window. A finder window is made up of a few different sections, and knowing the purpose of each one will do us well to understanding how to take advantage of it. If you've ever used iTunes on a Mac or a Windows PC, you've already been introduced to the main layout of the finder. If you're not familiar with iTunes, fear not. For now, we're just going to take a quick look at the similarities between it and the finder. If you do have some experience with iTunes, you may find yourself more at home in the finder than you'd expect. The panel on the left side of the iTunes window is broken down into sections like Library, where you store all your music, the Online Store, where you can make purchases, and the Genius and Regular Playlist sections. It may help to think of these sections as shelves in a filing cabinet. Each section stores a specific type of media. If we dumped all of our movies, music, and TV shows into one section, it would make it a lot harder to find what we're looking for. So clicking on any of these sections, such as music, will only show us our music files and not our movies or TV shows. We'll see how this analogy applies to the Finder in a minute. Another staple feature of both iTunes and the Finder is different ways to view our files, in this case music. These views are icon, list, and cover flow and can be accessed from the view toolbar located here. One of the last sections of iTunes that's duplicated in the Finder is the search bar. Typing into the search bar will retrieve results much like we saw in our video on Spotlight. Now let's head back and see these similar features in our Finder window. You can think of the Finder like a digital filing cabinet that stores your files and folders. Just like in a filing cabinet, you may have different drawers for different types of information, as we saw in iTunes. The main sections, or drawers, we're going to look at in this video are Devices, Places, and Search. Devices displays things like hard drives, CDs, or DVD-ROMs, and flash drives like USB memory sticks. Note that the latter three only appear if they've been plugged in or inserted into your DVD slot. Don't worry if your Finder window doesn't look exactly like the one in the video. You may or may not have a section called Shared depending on if you have Macs or PCs connected to a wired or wireless network. The next section is known as Places. It's the most often used area of the Finder and we'll be taking a good look at it shortly. The final section of the left portion of the Finder window is titled Search For. Search for does just what it sounds like and along with the search bar in the top right corner allows you to search for files or applications on your Mac. This area may not seem all that useful when you turn on a new Mac for the first time, but it becomes ever more helpful once you start to spend some time using, storing, and creating files and folders. When you set up a Mac for the very first time, you're asked to give it a name. This could be your own personal name, or something that signifies what the computer means to you, such as Office Mac, if you use it as your work computer. And whatever you name your Mac will be the same name as your home folder. This Mac, for example, is named ASG after this website, a switcher's guide, so that becomes the name of this home folder. That being said, your home folder will likely have a different name than what you see here, but will have the same house, or home, icon. It's important to know that once you've named your Mac, and hence your home folder, you really shouldn't change it, as this may cause problems with the rest of your computer. The home folder is your very own space carved out of your Mac, where you will find sections devoted to your files, such as documents, downloads, 
movies, and music folders. This is home base for nearly everything you store on your Mac. You may have noticed that inside your home folder you have a desktop and documents folder as well as the ones listed above and below your home folder in the left hand panel. These are actually just shortcuts to the same folders in your home folder. This idea of shortcuts is best described by comparing it to our applications. As we mentioned in our discussion of the dock, Apple has placed a selection of application icons in the dock that require just a single click to open. Let's say we want to look up an address in our address book for example. We click once on its icon in the dock to launch it. What you may not know is that these icons in the dock are actually just shortcuts to your application folder in the left hand side of the finder window. Double clicking on an application in the application folder is exactly the same thing as opening from its icon in the dock. One of the main purposes of the dock is to save you mouse clicks and hence time. It's a lot faster to launch an application from the dock than having to click onto the finder, clicking once in the application folder, then scrolling down to the application you want and double clicking it to launch. The relevance of this point with regards to the finder is that Apple has built these shortcut ideas into other areas of your Mac. You'll notice above and below your home folder on the left side of the finder that you have a desktop and documents folder. These are actually just shortcuts to the same location inside of your home folder. The reason they appear twice in the finder is the same reason as the dock. It's faster to click on your desktop or your documents folder from the left hand panel than it is to click on your home folder then again on either of those folders. Another big advantage of having shortcuts in the places section is that the folders in this section have distinct colors and shapes that can help you see and find them faster. Adding more shortcuts for frequently used folders is as simple as dragging them from your home folder to the places section of the finder. If we want to add a shortcut to our movies folder for example, click on its folder in your home folder first and then drag it above or below another folder and release the mouse or trackpad button when you see a thin blue line. You want to make sure to release the mouse or trackpad button when you see the blue line as opposed to the blue semicircle and green plus sign, which will actually add the shortcut inside of that folder, which is not what you want. We can see that this is indeed a shortcut folder since our music folder has the very same content when we view it from the places section as if we clicked on it in our home folder and then on music. If you no longer need a shortcut folder, simply drag it out of the finder window and it will disappear in a puff of smoke, just like removing an icon from the dock. Note that you haven't deleted the folder or its contents, just the shortcut to it. It can be added back just like before. If you have a folder you've created yourself that you need access to on a regular basis, such as something from your documents folder, you can add it as well to the shortcuts in the places section in the finder. It will only be seen as a generic blue folder, but will certainly be faster than having to drill down into your documents folder every time you need it. Another folder in the places section is your desktop, and simply shows you anything that's stored on your actual desktop. If we create a folder on our desktop, for example, it will show up in the desktop section of the finder. The last area of the places section is your applications folder. As we've seen, this is simply the folder where all of your applications on your Mac are stored and is where any software that isn't found on the dock can be accessed. The Applications folder is the only exception to the shortcut rule in that it isn't found inside your home folder, but rather inside the top level of your entire computer called Macintosh HD. This is simply because installing an application on your Mac makes it available to all users. If you're the only user on your computer, then this doesn't seem relevant. But if you have more than one user on a Mac, those users will need to have a different home folder and thus need to be able to access the same applications as you from a more central location. You don't have to worry about these technicalities too much. Just know that if you click on your home folder and don't see your applications folder, everything is okay. In part two of our discussion of the Finder, we'll be taking a look at the View Toolbar as well as how to use the Finder's built-in search capabilities to quickly find our files and folders.